Miley Ray Cyrus is an American singer, songwriter, actress, and television personality. Known for her distinctive raspy voice, her music incorporates elements of varied styles and genres, including pop, country pop, hip-hop, experimental, and rock. She has attained the most U.S. Billboard 200 Top 5 albums in the 21st century by a female artist, with a total of 13 entries. Cyrus, a daughter of country music singer Billy Ray Cyrus, emerged as a teen idol while portraying the title character of the Disney Channel television series Hannah Montana. As Hannah Montana, she attained two number one and three top five soundtracks on the U.S. Billboard 200, including the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 top 10 single He Could Be The One. Cyrus's own discography includes the U.S. number one albums Meet Miley Cyrus, Breakout, and Bangers, the top five releases Can't Be Tamed, Younger Now, Plastic Hearts and the free album Miley Cyrus and Her Dead Pets. Cyrus's EP's The Time of Our Lives and She Is Coming also debuted in the top five. Plastic Hearts became Cyrus's most acclaimed record, and her first entry on the Billboard Rock Chart, debuting atop the chart. It included the lead single Midnight Sky. Her other singles include the US Top 10 charting See You Again, Seven Things, The Climb, Party in the USA, Can't Be Tamed, We Can't Stop, Malibu, Without You, and the chart-topping Wrecking Ball. In 2020, the Recording Industry Association of America awarded Diamond Certification to Party in the USA, recognizing single sales of 10 million. Cyrus's career accolades include entries on the Time 100 list in 2000, and 8 and 2014, MTV's Best Artist of 2013 Award, and placement on Billboard's Greatest of All Time Artists chart in 2019. She is regarded as one of the few examples of successful child actors turned singers. As an actress, Cyrus has made appearances in the animated film Bolt and the feature films Hannah Montana, the movie and the last song. On television, Cyrus served as a coach on the singing competition series The Voice across two seasons, and starred in the episode Rachel, Jack and Ashley 2 of the Netflix series Black Mirror. Cyrus is an advocate for animal rights and adopted a vegan lifestyle in 2014. She founded the non-profit Happy Hippie Foundation in late 2014, which focuses on youth homelessness, and the LGBT community. Chapter 1, Life and Career Chapter 1 Section 1, 1992-2005, Early Life and Career Beginnings Destiny Hope Cyrus was born November 23, 1992, in Franklin, Tennessee, to Letitia Tishjean Cyrus and country singer Billy Ray Cyrus. She was born with supraventricular tachycardia, a condition causing an abnormal resting heart rate. Her birth name, Destiny Hope, expressed her parents' belief that she would accomplish great things. Her parents nicknamed her Smiley, which they later shortened to Miley, because she often smiled as an infant. In 2008, she legally changed her name to Miley Ray Cyrus, her middle name honors her grandfather, Democratic politician Ronald Ray Cyrus from Kentucky. Cyrus's godmother is singer-songwriter Dolly Parton. Against the advice of her father's record company, Cyrus's parents secretly married on December 28, 1993, a year after her birth. They had two more children together, son Brazen and daughter Noah. From previous relationships, her mother has two other children, Brandy and Trace. Her father's first child, Christopher Cody, was born in April 1992 and grew up with his mother, Kristen Lucky, in South Carolina. All of Cyrus's maternal siblings are established entertainers. Trace is a vocalist and guitarist for the electronic pop band Metro Station. Noah is an actress and, along with Brazen, models, singers and songwriters. Brandy was formerly a musician for the indie rock band Frank Plus Daryl, and is a professional DJ. The Cyrus Farmhouse is located on 500 acres of land outside Nashville, Tennessee. Cyrus attended Heritage Elementary School in Williamson County, when her family lived in Thompson's Station, Tennessee. When she was cast in Hannah Montana, the family moved to Los Angeles, 
where she attended options for youth charter schools and studied with a private tutor on set. Raised Christian, she was baptized in a Southern Baptist church before moving to Hollywood in 2005. She attended church regularly while growing up and wore a purity ring. In 2001, when Cyrus was eight, she and her family moved to Toronto, Canada, while her father filmed the television series Doc. After Billy Ray took her to see a 2001 Mervish production of Mamma Mia. At the Royal Alexandra Theatre, Cyrus grabbed his arm and told him, This is what I want to do, Daddy. I want to be an actress. She began singing and acting lessons at the Armstrong Acting Studio in Toronto. Cyrus's first acting role was as Kylie in her father's television series Doc. In 2003, she received credit under her birth name for her role as young Ruthie in Tim Burton's Big Fish. During this period, she auditioned with Taylor Lautner for the feature film The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl in 3D. Although she was one of two finalists for the role, she chose to appear in Hannah Montana instead. Her mother took on the role of Miley's manager, and worked to acquire a team to build her daughter's career. Cyrus signed with Mitchell Gossett, director of the youth division at Cunningham Escott Slevin Doherty. Gossett is often credited with discovering Cyrus and played a key role in her auditioning for Hannah Montana. She later signed with Jason Moray of Moray Management Group to handle her music career, having been directed to him by Dolly Parton. She hired her father's finance manager as part of her team. Chapter 1 Section 2 2006-2009, Hannah Montana and Early Musical Releases Cyrus auditioned for the Disney Channel television series Hannah Montana when she was 11 years old. She auditioned for the role of the title character's best friend, but was called to audition for the lead role instead. Despite being denied the part at first because she was too small and too young for the role, she was later cast as the lead because of her singing and acting abilities. The series premiered in March 2006 to the largest audience for a Disney Channel program, and quickly ranked among the highest-rated series on basic cable. The success of the series led to Cyrus being labeled a teen idol. She toured with the Cheetah Girls as Hannah Montana in September 2006, performing songs from the show's first season. Walt Disney Records released a soundtrack credited to Cyrus's character in October of that year. The record was a commercial success, topping the Billboard 200 chart in the United States, it went on to sell over 3 million copies worldwide. With the release of the soundtrack, Cyrus became the first act within the Walt Disney Company to have deals in television, film, consumer products, and music. Cyrus signed a four album deal with Hollywood Records to distribute her non Hannah Montana soundtrack music. She released the two disc album Hannah Montana 2, Meet Miley Cyrus in June 2007. The first disc was credited as the second soundtrack by Hannah Montana, while the second disc served as Cyrus's debut studio album. The album became her second to reach the top of the Billboard 200 and has sold over 3 million copies since its release. Months after the release of the project, See You Again was released as the lead single from the album. The song was a commercial success, and has sold over 2 million copies in the United States since its release. She then collaborated with her father on the single Ready, Set, Don't Go. Cyrus embarked on her highly successful Best of Both Worlds tour to promote its release. Ticketmaster officials commented that there been a demand of this level or intensity since the Beatles or Elvis. The tour's success led to the theatrical release of the 3D concert film Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus, Best of Both Worlds Concert. While initially intended to be a limited release, the film's success led to a longer run. Cyrus and friend Mandy Giroux began posting videos on the popular website YouTube in February 2008, referring to the clips as the Miley and Mandy show, the videos garnered a large online following. In April 2008, several pictures of Cyrus in her underwear and swimsuit were leaked online by a teenager who hacked her Gmail account. 
Further controversy erupted when it was reported that the then 15-year-old Cyrus had posed topless during a photo shoot by Annie Leibovitz for Vanity Fair. The New York Times subsequently clarified that although the shot left the impression that Cyrus was bare-breasted, she was wrapped in a bed sheet and was not topless. Cyrus went on to release her second studio album, Breakout, in June of that year. The album earned the highest first week sales of her career thus far and became her third to top the Billboard 200. Cyrus later starred with John Travolta in the animated film Bolt, her debut as a film actress. She also co wrote the song I Thought I Lost You for the film, which she sings as a duet with Travolta. The film was a critical and commercial success and earned her a Golden Globe Award nomination for Best Original Song. In March 2009, Cyrus released The Climb as a single from the soundtrack to the Hannah Montana feature film. It was met with a warm critical and commercial reaction, becoming a crossover hit in both pop and country music formats. The soundtrack, which features the single, went on to become Cyrus's fourth entry to top the Billboard 200. At age 16, she became the youngest artist in history to have four number one albums on the chart. She released her fourth soundtrack as Hannah Montana in July 2009, which debuted at number two on the Billboard 200. Cyrus later launched her first fashion line, Miley Cyrus and Max Azria, through Walmart. It was promoted by the release of Party in the USA, and the EP The Time of Our Lives. Cyrus said the record was a transitioning album really to introduce people to what I want my next record to sound like and with time I will be able to do that a little more. Party in the USA went on to become one of Cyrus's most successful singles to date, and is considered to be one of her signature songs. She next embarked on her first world tour, the Wonder World Tour, which was a critical and commercial success. On December 7, 2009, Cyrus performed for Queen Elizabeth II, and other members of the British royal family at the Royal Variety Performance in Blackpool, Lancashire. Billboard ranked her as the fourth best selling female artist of 2009. Chapter 1, Section 3, 2010 2012, Can't Be Tamed and Focus on Acting. Hoping to foster a more mature image, Cyrus starred in the film The Last Song, based on the Nicholas Sparks novel. It was met with negative critical reviews but was a box office hit. Cyrus further attempted to shift her image with the release of her third studio album, Can't Be Tamed. The album featured a more dance-oriented sound than her prior releases and stirred a considerable amount of controversy over its lyrical content, and Cyrus's live performances. It sold 106,000 copies in its first week of release and became her first studio album, not to top the Billboard 200 chart in the United States. Due to the controversy surrounding the release, the album's second and final single, Who Owns My Heart was released solely in German territories. Cyrus released her final soundtrack as Hannah Montana that October, it was a commercial failure. Cyrus was the subject of further controversy when a video posted online in December 2010 showed her, then aged 18, smoking salvia with a bong. 2010 ended with her ranking at number 13 on the Forbes Celebrity 100 list. She embarked on her worldwide Gypsy Heart tour in April 2011, which featured no North American dates. She cited her various controversial moments as the reason claiming she only wanted to travel where she felt the most love. Following the release of Can't Be Tamed, Cyrus officially parted ways with Hollywood Records. With her obligations to Hannah Montana fulfilled, Cyrus announced that she planned to take a hiatus from music to focus on her acting career. She later confirmed she would not be going to college. Cyrus hosted the March 5, 2011 episode of Saturday Night Live, where she poked fun at her recent controversies. That November, it was announced that Cyrus would voice Mavis in the animated film Hotel Transylvania, however by February 2012 she was dropped from the project and replaced with Selena Gomez. At the time, Cyrus attributed her departure to wanting to work on her music, but later revealed the real reason behind her exit was because she bought her then-boyfriend Liam Hemsworth a birthday cake shaped like a penis and licked it. 
She later made an appearance on the MTV television series Punked with Kelly Osbourne and Khloe Kardashian. Cyrus starred alongside Demi Moore in the independent film LOL. The film had a limited release, and was a critical and commercial failure. She then starred in the comedy film So Undercover, appearing as an FBI agent required to go undercover at a college sorority. Cyrus released a string of live performances known as the Backyard Sessions on YouTube during the spring and summer of 2012, the performances were of classic songs she personally liked. Having begun working on a failed fourth album the previous year, Cyrus resumed working on a new musical project in late 2012. She collaborated with producers Rock Mafia on their song Morning Sun, which was made available for free download online. She had previously appeared in the music video for their debut single, The Big Bang. Cyrus later provided guest vocals on Decisions by Borgor. Both Cyrus and Hemsworth appeared in the song's music video. She went on to guest star as Missy in two episodes of the CBS sitcom Two and a Half Men. Cyrus attracted significant media attention after cutting her traditionally long, brown hair in favor of a blonde, pixie cut, she commented that she had never felt more in whole life and that it really changed life. Chapter 1 Section 4, 2013-2015, Bangers and Miley Cyrus and Her Dead Pets In 2013, Cyrus hired Larry Rudolph to be her manager, although she is currently managed by Maverick's Adam Lieber, Rudolph is best known for representing Britney Spears. It was confirmed that Cyrus had signed with RCA Records for her future releases. She worked with producers such as Pharrell Williams and Mike Will made it on her fourth studio album, resulting in a hip-hop-influenced sound. She collaborated with numerous hip-hop artists' releases and appeared on the Snoop Lion song Ashtrays and Heartbreaks, released as the lead single from his twelfth studio album, Reincarnated. She collaborated with Will I Am on the song Fall Down, released as a promotional single that same month. The song entered the Billboard Hot 100 at number 58, marking her first appearance on the chart since Can't Be Tamed. She provided guest vocals on the Lil Twist song Twerk, which also featured vocals by Justin Bieber. The song was unreleased for unknown reasons but leaked online. On May 23, 2013, it was confirmed that Cyrus would be featured on the Mike Will Made It single 23, with Wiz Khalifa and Juicy J. The single went on to peak at number 11 on the Hot 100, and had sold over 1 million copies worldwide as of 2013. Cyrus released her new single We Can't Stop on June 3. Touted as her comeback single, it became a worldwide commercial success, topping charts in territories such as the United Kingdom. The song's music video, set the Vivo record for most views within 24 hours of release and became the first to reach 100 million views on the site. Cyrus performed with Robin Thicke at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards, a performance that resulted in widespread media attention and public scrutiny. Her simulated sex acts with a foam finger were described as disturbing and the whole performance as cringeworthy. Cyrus released Wrecking Ball, as the second single from Bangers on the same day as the VMAs. The accompanying music video, showing her swinging naked on a wrecking ball, was viewed over 19 million times within 24 hours of its release. The single became Cyrus's first to top the Hot 100 in the US and sold over 2 million copies. On October 2, MTV aired the documentary Miley, The Movement, that chronicled the recording of her fourth studio album Bangers, which was released on October 4. The album was a commercial success, debuting at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 270,000 copies. On October 5, Cyrus hosted Saturday Night Live for the second time. On November 5, Cyrus featured on rapper Future's Real and True with Mr. Hudson, an accompanying music video premiered five days later on November 10, 2013. In late 2013 she was declared Artist of the Year by MTV. On January 29, 2014, she played an acoustic concert show on MTV Unplugged, performing songs from bangers featuring a guest appearance by Madonna. 
It became the highest rated MTV Unplugged in the past decade, with over 1.7 million streams. Cyrus was also featured in the Marc Jacobs Spring 2014 campaign along with Natalie Westling and Esmeralda C. Reynolds. She launched her controversial Bangers tour that year, which was positively received by critics. Two months into her tour, Cyrus's Alaskan Klee Kai was found mauled to death at her home after fighting with a coyote. The trauma from the incident inspired her to dedicate her life to veganism. Two weeks later, Cyrus suffered an allergic reaction to the antibiotic cephalexin, prescribed to treat a sinus infection, resulting in her hospitalization in Kansas City. Though she rescheduled some of her U.S. tour dates, she resumed the tour two weeks later, beginning with the European leg. While collaborating with the Flaming Lips on their remake of the Beatles's Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, with a little help from my friends, Cyrus began working with Wayne Coyne on her fifth studio album. She claimed that she was taking her time to focus on the music, and that the album would not be released until she felt it was ready. Coyne compared his collaborative material with Cyrus to the catalogues of Pink Floyd and Portishead, and described their sound as being a slightly wiser, sadder, more true version of Cyrus's pop music output. Cyrus also worked on the films The Night Before and A Very Murray Christmas during this period, both roles were cameos. Reports began to surface in 2015 that Cyrus was working on two albums simultaneously, one of which she hoped to release at no charge. This was confirmed by her manager who claimed she was willing to end her contract with RCA Records if they refused to let her release a free album. Cyrus was the host of the 2015 MTV Video Music Awards, making her its first openly pansexual host, and gave a surprise performance of a new song Do It. During the show's finale. Immediately following the performance, Cyrus announced that her fifth studio album, Miley Cyrus and Her Dead Pets, was available for free streaming on SoundCloud. The album was written and produced primarily by Cyrus, and has been called experimental and psychedelic, with elements of psychedelic pop, psychedelic rock, and alternative pop. Chapter 1 Section 5, 2016-2017, The Voice and Younger Now In 2016, following the release of her fifth studio album the previous year, Cyrus resumed working on her sixth studio effort. She was a key advisor during the tenth season of the reality singing competition The Voice. In March, Cyrus had signed on as a coach for the eleventh season of The Voice as a replacement for Gwen Stefani, Cyrus became the youngest coach to appear in any incarnation of the series. In September 2016, Cyrus co-starred in Crisis in Six Scenes, a television series Woody Allen created for Amazon Studios. She played a radical activist who causes chaos in a conservative 1960s household while hiding from the police. On September 17, 2016, she appeared on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon and covered Bob Dylan's Baby, I'm in the Mood for You. Cyrus also had an uncredited voice cameo as mainframe in the superhero film Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, released in May 2017. On May 11, 2017, Cyrus released Malibu as the lead single from her sixth album. The single debuted at number 64 on the Billboard Hot 100 and peaked at number 10 on the chart on its second week. On June 9, Cyrus released Inspired after performing the song at the One Love Manchester Benefit concert. It served as a promotional single from the album. On August 8, Cyrus announced that her sixth studio album, would be titled Younger Now and would be released on September 29, 2017. The album's title track was released as the second single from the album on August 18 and debuted and peaked at number 79 on the Billboard Hot 100. On August 27, Cyrus performed the track at the 2017 MTV Video Music Awards. On September 15, she performed Malibu, Younger Now, See You Again, Party in the USA and a cover of the Roberta Flack hit The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face for the BBC Radio 1 Live Lounge. On October 2, as part of her one-week regular musical appearances on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, 
Cyrus sang her 2009 hit single The Climb for the first time since 2011 alongside a cover of No Freedom by Dido to honor the victims of the Las Vegas shooting. The former one has since then been performed at multiple charity events and democratic marches like March for Our Lives. That same year Cyrus also returned as a coach in the 13th season of The Voice after taking a one-season hiatus. On October 5, 2017, Cyrus confirmed that she would not be returning to The Voice for season 14. On October 30, 2017, Cyrus revealed she would neither release any further singles from Younger Now nor tour for it. Chapter 1 Section 6, 2018-2019, Black Mirror, She Is Coming and Festival Tour Before the release of Younger Now in September 2017, Cyrus expressed she was already two songs deep on the next. Producers attached to her seventh studio album included previous collaborator Mike Will Made It and new collaborators Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt. Her first collaboration with Ronson, Nothing Breaks Like a Heart from his 2019 album Late Night Feelings, was released on November 29, 2018, to great commercial reception, especially in Europe, where it peaked at number two on the UK singles chart as well as in Ireland and topped the charts in various Eastern Europe countries like Hungary or Croatia. During the first quarter of 2019, Cyrus became quite notable for her cover songs. Having already taken part in Music Air's Person of the Year back in 2018 celebrating Fleetwood Mac, she returned to the event the year after to honor the career of country star and godmother Dolly Parton performing Islands in the Stream alongside Canadian singer-songwriter Shawn Mendes, with who she also performed in My Blood a couple days later at the 61st Grammy Awards. Other contributions of Cyrus include her participation at the Chris Cornell tribute concert I Am The Highway, where she sang as Hope and Promise Fade as well as her cover record of Elton John's Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, included in the tribute album Revamp, reimagining the songs of Elton John and Bernie Taupin. Cyrus also honored John at the I'm Still Standing, a Grammy salute to Elton John tribute concert in 2018, where she covered the bitches back. On May 31, 2019, Cyrus tweeted that her seventh studio album, would be titled She's Miley Cyrus and would comprise three six-song EPs, which would be released before the full-length album, She Is Coming on May 31st, She Is Here in the Summer, and She Is Everything in the Fall. She Is Coming, which also included vocal collaborations with RuPaul, Sway Lee, Mike Will Made It, and Ghostface Killer, debuted at number 5 on the US Billboard, 200 with 36,000 album equivalent units, while the single Mother's Daughter entered at number 54 on the US Billboard Hot 100. The Wookiee remix of Mother's Daughter received a nomination for Best Remixed Recording at the 62nd Annual Grammy Awards while the original music video won two MTV Video Music Awards. Cyrus promoted the EP with a summer European tour that visited A-list festivals like Glastonbury and Primavera Sound. Cyrus starred in Rachel, Jack, and Ashley too, an episode of the Netflix science fiction series Black Mirror, which she filmed in South Africa in November 2018. It was released on Netflix on June 5, 2019. In the episode, she played fictional pop star Ashley O and provided the voice for her air doll extension. Ashley II. The episode's plot received notable comparisons to Britney Spears' conservatorship and the Free Britney movement, which Cyrus has been an advocate for. The music video for the song on a roll from the episode was released on June 13, the song itself and the B-side Right Where I Belong were released to digital platforms the next day. On June 27, it was revealed that Cyrus had collaborated with Ariana Grande and Lana Del Rey on Don't Call Me Angel, the lead single of the soundtrack to the 2019 film Charlie's Angels. It was released on September 13, 2019. In August 2019, Cyrus released Slide Away, her first song since announcing her separation from then-husband Hemsworth. The song hinted at their breakup and contained lyrics such as Move On, we're not 17, I'm not who I used to be. A music video was released in September 2019 that contained further references, including a Ten of Hearts playing card at the bottom of a pool to represent the end of her decade-long relationship with Hemsworth. Chapter 1 Section 7, 
2020 present, Plastic Hearts. On August 14, 2020, Cyrus released the single Midnight Sky and confirmed the cancellation of the EPs She Is Here and She Is Everything due to major recent changes in her life that did not fit the essence of the project including her divorce of Hemsworth and the burning of the couple's house during the Woolsey Fire in California, as well as the COVID-19 pandemic. Midnight Sky became her highest charting solo single since Malibu in 2017, peaking at number 14 on the US Billboard Hot 100. Internationally, in the United Kingdom the song has thus far peaked at number 5 on the UK singles chart. The track was later mashed up with Stevie Nicks Edge of 17. In October, Cyrus had a third backyard session on MTV and announced via Instagram that her seventh studio album Plastic Hearts would be released on November 27, 2020. It was previously intended to be called She Is Miley Cyrus, completing the EP series once finalized. The album was released to positive reviews from critics and performed well, debuting at number 2 on the Billboard 200, with 60,000 units, becoming her 12th top 10 entry on the chart. With that entry, Cyrus broke the record for attaining the most US Billboard 200 top 5 albums in the 21st century by a female artist. Plastic Hearts marked a step of Cyrus into rock and glam rock music and spawned two other singles, Prisoner featuring English singer Dua Lipa and Angels Like You, which peaked at 8 and 66 respectively in the United Kingdom. The album also included vocal collaborations with Billy Idol and Joan Jett. Due to popular demand and social media virality, Cyrus included the live covers of Blondie's Heart of Glass and The Cranberry Zombie. Cyrus won a 2020 Webby Special Achievement Award. In February 2021, Cyrus performed at the very first TikTok tailgate show in Tampa, for 7,500 vaccinated healthcare workers. It served as a pre-show before Super Bowl 55. It aired on TikTok and CBS. The performance was featured in the music video for Angels Like You. In March 2021, Cyrus departed RCA and signed with Columbia Records, a sister label of RCA under the Sony Music umbrella. That same month Cyrus embraced her days as Hannah Montana and wrote an open letter to the character on social media for the show's 15th anniversary, despite all statements that her days as Montana gave Cyrus an identity crisis. Rumors about a possible revival of the show have been around ever since. On April 23, 2021, the Kid Leroy released a remix of his single Without You featuring Cyrus, her first release under Columbia Records. On April 3, 2021, Cyrus performed at the NCAA March Madness Final Four in Indianapolis with the frontline health care workers in the audience. More recently, she signed an overall deal with Universal, with the first project off the deal will being the Stand By You Pride special concert to be streamed on Peacock. In June, Cyrus released a studio cover version of Metallica's Nothing Else Matters, which was subsequently included in the Metallica Blacklist, a rendition of the band's homonymous record, which turns 30 in 2021. The track also features Elton John on the piano, Yo-Yo Ma and Red Hot Chili Peppers Chad Smith. The singer initially teased a whole Metallica cover album in October 2020 and had already performed the track live during her set at Glastonbury. To promote Plastic Hearts, Cyrus teased a concert tour around the album's release. The tour was postponed due to the pandemic but thanks to the high vaccination rates in the United States, Cyrus was able to headline several music festivals in the country during summer 2021, including Austin City Limits, Lollapalooza, and Music Midtown. Cyrus has revealed to tour South America for the first time in seven years in early 2022. She was more recently assigned host, alongside Pete Davidson of NBC's New Year's Eve special, and she would be produced through her Hopetown Entertainment Company. Chapter 2 – Artistry Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Musical Style and Influence Cyrus has cited Elvis Presley as her biggest inspiration. She has also cited artists such as Madonna, Lana Del Rey, Dolly Parton, Timberland, Christina Aguilera, Joan Jett, Lil Kim, 
Shania Twain, Hanson, one Republic and Britney Spears as influences. Since the beginning of her music career, Cyrus has been described as being predominantly a pop artist. Her Hannah Montana 2, Meet Miley Cyrus debut studio effort was characterized as sounding similar to her releases as Hannah Montana featuring a pop rock and bubblegum pop sound. Cyrus hoped that the release of Breakout would help distance her from this sound, the record featured Cyrus experimenting with various genres. Cyrus co-wrote eight songs for the album, and was quoted as saying, I just hope this record showcases that, more than anything, I'm a writer. The songs on her early releases feature lyrics on the topics of love and relationships. Cyrus possesses a mezzo-soprano vocal range, although her vocals were once described as alto, with a Nashville twang in both her spoken and singing voice. Her voice has a distinctive raspy sound to it, similar in vain to that of Pink and Amy Winehouse. On Party in the USA, her vocals feature belter refrains, while those on the song Obsessed are described as husky. Releases such as The Climb and These Four Walls feature elements of country music and showcase Cyrus's twangy vocals. Cyrus experimented with an electro-pop sound on Fly on the Wall, a genre that she would explore further with the release of Can't Be Tamed, her third studio album. It was initially intended to feature rock elements prior to its completion, and Cyrus claimed after its release that it could be her final pop album. The album's songs speak of Cyrus's desire to achieve freedom in both her personal and professional life. She began working on bangers during a musical hiatus, and described the record as having a Dirty South feel prior to its release. Critics noted the use of hip-hop and synth-pop on the album. The album's songs are placed in chronological order telling the story of her failed relationship with Liam Hemsworth. Cyrus described Miley Cyrus and her dead pets as a little psychedelic, but still in that pop world. For her rock-influenced album, Plastic Hearts, Cyrus cited Britney Spears and Metallica as major influences. Chapter 2 Section 2 – Stage Performances Cyrus has become known for her controversial performances, most notably on her Bangers Tour and Milky Milky Milk Tour. Her performance of Party in the USA at the 2019 Choice Awards sparked a national uproar because of her outfit, and perceived pole dancing. She faced similar controversy over her performance of Can't Be Tamed on Britain's Got Talent, where the singer pretended to kiss one of her female backup dancers on stage, she defended the performance, arguing that she did nothing wrong. Cyrus became the subject of media, and public scrutiny following her performance of We Can't Stop and Blurred Lines with Robin Thicke at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards. Clad in a flesh-colored latex two-piece, she touched Thicke's crotch area with a giant foam finger and twerked against his crotch. The performance resulted in a media frenzy, one reviewer likened the performance to a bad acid trip, while another described it as a train wreck in the classic sense of the word as the audience reaction seemed to be a mix of confusion, dismay and horror in a cocktail of embarrassment. Cyrus entered the stage of her bangers tour by sliding down a slide in the shape of a tongue, and draw media attention during the tour for her outfits and racy performances. Chapter 3 – Public Image In the early years of her career, Cyrus had a generally wholesome image as a teen idol. Her fame increased dramatically upon the 2008 Vanity Fair photo scandal, and it was reported that photographs of Cyrus could be shopped for $2,000 apiece. In subsequent years, her image continued to shift dramatically from her teen idol status. In 2008, Donny Osmond wrote of Cyrus's imminent transition to adulthood, Miley will have to face adulthood. As she does, she'll want to change her image, and that change will be met with adversity. The release of her 2010 album Can't Be Tamed saw Cyrus officially attempting to distance herself from her teenage persona by releasing controversial music videos for her songs Can't Be Tamed and Who Owns My Heart. Her behavior throughout 2013 and 2014 sparked a substantial amount of controversy, although her godmother Dolly Parton stated the girl can write. The girl can sing. The girl is smart. And she doesn't have to be so drastic. 
but I will respect her choices. I did it my way, so why can't she do it her way? Cyrus was placed at number 17 on Forbes' list of the most powerful celebrities in 2014, with the magazine noting that the last time she made our list was when she was still rolling in Hannah Montana money. Now the pop singer is all grown up and courting controversy at every turn. In August 2014, her life was documented in a comic book titled Fame, Miley Cyrus, beginning with her controversial 2013 MTV Video Music Awards performance to her Disney fame and exploring her childhood in Tennessee. The comic book was written by Michael L. Frizzell and drawn by Juan Luis Rincon and is available in both print and digital formats. In September 2010, Cyrus placed 10th on Billboard's first-ever list of music's hottest minors of 2010, and was ranked 21st in 2011 and 18th in 2012. In 2013, Maxim placed Cyrus at number one on their annual Hot 100 list. Cyrus was chosen by Time magazine as one of their finalists for Person of the Year in November 2013, she came in third place with 16.3% of the staff vote. In March 2014, Skidmore College in New York began offering a special topics sociology course entitled The Sociology of Miley Cyrus, Race, Class, Gender and Media which was using Miley as a lens through which to explore sociological thinking about identity, entertainment, media and fame. In 2015, Cyrus was listed as one of the nine runners-up for the Advocates Person of the Year. Chapter 4, Personal Life Cyrus currently resides in Hidden Hills, California, and also owns a $5.8 million home in her hometown of Franklin, Tennessee. While Cyrus was raised as a Christian and identified herself as such during her childhood and early adult life, she includes references to Tibetan Buddhism in the lyrics to her song Milky Milky Milk, and is also influenced by Hindu beliefs. Cyrus followed a strict vegan diet from 2013 to 2019, but admitted in September 2020 to no longer being a vegan, for health reasons, commenting. I was vegan for a very long time and I've had to introduce fish and omegas into my life because my brain wasn't functioning properly. Cyrus currently identifies as a pescatarian. Chapter 4 Section 1, Sexuality and Gender Cyrus came out as pansexual to her mother at age 14 and, as said, I never want to label myself. I am ready to love anyone that loves me for who I am. I am open. In June 2015, Time magazine reported she is gender fluid. She was quoted as stating she doesn't relate to being boy or girl, and I don't have to have my partner relate to boy or girl, Cyrus stated she is literally open to every single thing that is consenting and doesn't involve an animal, and everyone is of age. Cyrus is a supporter of the LGBT community. Her song My Heart Beats for Love was written for one of Cyrus's gay friends, while she has since claimed London to be her favorite place to perform due to its extensive gay scene. Cyrus also has an equals sign tattooed on her ring finger in support of same-sex marriage. After her 2018 marriage to a man, Cyrus went on the record to state she still identified as queer. She is the founder of the Happy Hippie Foundation, which works to fight injustice facing homeless youth, LGBTQ youth and other vulnerable populations. Chapter 4 Section 2, Cannabis Use Cyrus has been open about her recreational use of cannabis. She told Rolling Stone in 2013 that it was the best drug on earth and called it, along with MDMA, a happy drug. While accepting the Best Video Award at the 2013 MTV Europe Music Awards, Cyrus smoked what appeared to be a joint on stage, this was removed from the delayed broadcast of the show in the United States. In a 2014 interview with W Magazine, Cyrus stated I love weed and I just love getting stoned. In a 2017 interview on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, Cyrus revealed that she had quit cannabis before the press tour for her Younger Now album so she could be super clear when discussing the record. During a 2018 interview with Andy Cohen, she credited her mother for reintroducing her to cannabis. In 2019, 
Cyrus sent nothing breaks like a heart collaborator Mark Ronson a cannabis bouquet from Lowell Herb Company as a tongue-in-cheek Valentine's Day gift. She invested in the cannabis company in August, dot prior to undergoing vocal cord surgery in November 2019, and after her postoperative recovery, Cyrus has stated that she has stayed sober from the use of cannabis and alcohol. Chapter 4 Section 3 Relationships Cyrus has stated that she dated singer-actor Nick Jonas from June 2006 to December 2007, claiming they were in love and began dating soon after they first met. Their relationship attracted considerable media attention. Cyrus was in a nine-month relationship with model Justin Gaston from 2008 to 2009. While filming the last song, Cyrus began an on-again, off-again relationship with her co-star Liam Hemsworth in 2009. During the breakups, Cyrus was romantically linked to actors Lucas Till and Josh Bowman. Cyrus and Hemsworth were first engaged from May 2012 until September 2013. She also dated actor Patrick Schwarzenegger and model Stella Maxwell. Cyrus and Hemsworth rekindled their relationship in March 2016, and became re-engaged that October. In November 2018, Cyrus and Hemsworth's home burned down in the Woolsey Fire in California. On December 23, Cyrus and Hemsworth married in a private wedding ceremony in their home in Nashville, Tennessee. She felt that her marriage what it looks like for someone that's a queer person like to be in a hetero relationship though she was still very sexually attracted to women. Cyrus indicated that the ceremony was kind of out of character for because worn rings forever definitely didn't need it in any way. She believed the loss of their home to be the catalyst for getting married, citing that the timing felt right and that no one is promised the next day, or the next, so to be in the now as much as possible. On August 10, 2019, Cyrus announced their separation. Eleven days later, Hemsworth filed for divorce citing irreconcilable differences. To celebrate her divorce from Hemsworth, Cyrus had a note written to her from Yoko Ono tattooed on her left shoulder blade. Their divorce was finalized on January 28, 2020. Following the announcement of her separation from Hemsworth, she dated Caitlin Carter from August to September 2019. In October 2019, Cyrus began dating Australian singer Cody Simpson, a longtime friend. In August, 2020, Cyrus announced that she and Simpson had split up. Her announcement coincided with the release of her single Midnight Sky, which was inspired by her breakups with Hemsworth, Carter, and Simpson. Chapter 5, Philanthropy Throughout her career, Cyrus has sung on several charity singles such as, Just Stand Up, Send It On, Everybody Hurts and We Are The World 25 for Haiti. She has visited sick fans in hospitals throughout the years. She is an avid supporter of the City of Hope National Medical Center in California, having attended benefit concerts in 2008, 2009 and 2012. In 2008 and 2009, during her Best of Both Worlds and Wonder World tours, for every concert ticket sold, she donated $1 to the organization. Cyrus celebrated her 16th birthday at Disneyland by delivering a $1 million donation from Disney to Youth Service America. In July 2009, Cyrus performed at the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation's 20th Annual A Time for Heroes Celebrity Picnic and donated several items including autographed merchandise, and a script from Hannah Montana for the Ronald McDonald House Auction. Cyrus has supported charities, such as the Elton John AIDS Foundation, Entertainment Industry Foundation, Habitat for Humanity, United Service Organizations, Youth Service America, and Music for Relief. In February 2010, she donated several items, including the dress she wore to the 52nd Annual Grammy Awards, and two tickets to the Hollywood premiere of her film The Last Song, to raise money for the victims of the 2010 Haiti earthquake. In January 2011, Cyrus met an ailing fan with Spina Bifida with the charity Kids Wish Network. In April 2011, 
she appeared in a commercial for the American Red Cross asking people to pledge $10 to help those affected by the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. That same year, Hilary Duff presented Cyrus with the first ever Global Action Youth Leadership Award at the first annual Global Action Awards Gala for her support of Blessings in a Backpack, an organization that works to feed hungry children in schools, and her personal Get a Good On campaign with the Youth Services of America. Cyrus stated, I want to do something they love. Not something that seems like a chore because someone tells them that's the right thing to do or what their parents want or what's important to people around them, but what's in their heart. In December 2011, she appeared in a commercial for the charity JP Haitian Relief Organization, and teamed up with her elder brother Trace Cyrus to design a limited edition t-shirt and hoodie for charity. All proceeds from the sale of these items went to her charity, Get Her Good On, which supports education for underprivileged children. That month, she performed the climb at the CNN Heroes, an all-star tribute at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. In 2012, Cyrus released a cover version of Bob Dylan's You're Gonna Make Me Lonesome When You Go featuring John Zo West for the charity Amnesty International as a part of the album Chimes of Freedom. She also appeared in a commercial for the Rock the Vote campaign, which encouraged young people to make their voices heard by voting in the 2012 federal election. For her 20th birthday, activists at People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals adopted a pig called Nora in her name. Cyrus also supports 39 well-known charities, including, Make-A-Wish Foundation, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, to write love on her arms, no 8 campaign, Love is Louder Than the Pressure to be Perfect and the Jed Foundation among others. In 2013, Cyrus was named the 14th Most Charitable Celebrity of the Year by Do Something. She also appeared with Justin Bieber and Pitbull in a television special entitled The Real Change Project, Artists for Education. On July 26, 2014, it was announced that Cyrus would appear alongside Justin Timberlake at an HIV-slash-AIDS charity event in the White House. At the 2014 MTV Video Music Awards, Cyrus won Video of the Year for her song Wrecking Ball. Instead of accepting the award herself, she invited a 22-year-old homeless man by the name of Jesse to collect it on her behalf, she had met him at My Friend's Place, an organization that helps homeless youth find shelter, work, health care, and education. His acceptance speech urged musicians to learn more about youth homelessness in Los Angeles through Cyrus's Facebook page. Cyrus then launched a Prizio campaign to raise funds for the charity, those who made donations were entered into a sweepstake for a chance to meet Cyrus on her bangers tour in Rio de Janeiro that September. In early 2015, Cyrus teamed up with cosmetic company MAC Cosmetics to launch her own branded Viva Glam lipstick and the proceeds went to the MAC AIDS Fund. In June 2017, Cyrus performed at One Love Manchester, a televised benefit concert organized by Ariana Grande following the Manchester Arena bombing on her concert two weeks earlier. During an appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show in August 2017, Cyrus revealed that she would be donating $500,000 to Hurricane Harvey relief efforts. In 2019, she performed at the Sunny Hill Festival in Kosovo, a festival to raise funds to help people with financial difficulties in Kosovo created by Dua Lipa and her father. Cyrus and her then-boyfriend Cody Simpson donated 120 tacos to healthcare workers amid the COVID-19 pandemic in April 2020. That same month, she partnered again with MAC Cosmetics to earmark $10 million from their annual Viva Glam campaign toward 250 local organizations nationwide heavily impacted by the pandemic. Cyrus has shown support for the Black Lives Matter movement by sharing links and resources on social media, donning a Black Lives Matter face mask, and attending protests following the murder of George Floyd. Chapter 5 Section 1 Happy Hippie Foundation Cyrus is the founder of the Happy Hippie Foundation, which works to fight injustice facing homeless youth, LGBTQ youth and other vulnerable populations. Since 2014, the foundation has served nearly 1,500 homeless youth in Los Angeles, reached more than 25,000 LGBTQ youth and their families with resources about gender, 
and provided social services to transgender individuals, youth in conflict zones, and people affected by crises. Happy Hippie encourages Cyrus's fans to support causes including gender equality, LGBTQ rights and mental health through awareness campaigns and fundraising. Leading up to the 2020 presidential election, Happy Hippie encouraged its Instagram followers to seek out vote riders for assistance ensuring that gender identity would not affect their right to vote. On June 15, 2015, Cyrus unleashed the campaign hashtag InstaPride in collaboration with Instagram. The campaign features a series of portraits starring transgender and gender expansive people, which were posted to her Instagram feed with the hashtags hashtag happy hippie presence and hashtag InstaPride. It was aimed at encouraging diversity and tolerance by showing these people in a positive light as examples for others who might be struggling to figure themselves out, as well as a reference point for people who didn't know personally anyone in that situation. Cyrus was the one behind the camera for the photoshoot the whole time and even interviewed her 14 subjects to share their personal stories along with their portraits. She decided to predominate the color yellow since she believes it is a happy and non-sexualized color. She said she wanted to bring attention and celebrate people who wouldn't normally find themselves being the stars of a photoshoot or wouldn't find themselves on the cover of a magazine. Following the loss of their Malibu home from the Woolsey fire, Cyrus and Hemsworth partnered with their community to launch the Malibu Foundation for Relief Efforts following the 2018 California wildfires. Through the Happy Hippie Foundation, Cyrus and Hemsworth donated $500,000 to the Malibu Foundation. Chapter 6, Legacy Cyrus's early success as the face of Disney Channel's billion-dollar franchise Hannah Montana played an important role as shaping the 2000s teen pop culture earning her the honorific nickname of Teen Queen. Bickford stated Hannah Montana adopted a business model of combining celebrity acts with film, television, and popular music for a pre-adolescent audience. He called the series genre-defining and likened this model to 1990s teen pop artists such as Britney Spears and NSYNC, who were also marketed to children. Morgan Genevieve Blue of Feminist Media Studies stated the series' primary female characters, Miley and her alter ego Hannah, are positioned as post-feminist subjects in a way their representation is confined to notions of femininity and consumerism. The Times journalist Craig McLean named Cyrus the world's biggest ever teenage star. During the Best of Both Worlds tour, tickets were sold out in minutes and stadiums were completely filled making it the highest grossing concert tour for a new act in 2007 and 2008. According to Billboard Box Score, the Best of Both Worlds tour had a total attendance of approximately 1 million people and grossed over US, $54 million earning Cyrus the award for Breakthrough Act at the 2000, and eight Billboard Touring Awards. In 2012, Rolling Stone ranked Cyrus as one of the top 25 teen idol breakout moments of the rock era, which Andy Green wrote, Miley's rise was meteoric. Tickets for her 2007 Best of Both Worlds tour sold out faster than any tour that year she seemed like she was about to become a more stable version of Britney Spears, especially after singles like The Climb and, and Party in the USA due to her popularity, Paul McCartney compared their success to that of the Beatles in an interview during his tour in 2011. In this regard, he commented, I think when they have new sensations, like Miley Cyrus or Justin Bieber, teenagers identify with them, in the same way that the boys identified with the Beatles, when you have thousands of teenagers feeling the same, they become elated because they have this love for something in common, whether it is the Beatles, Miley Cyrus, Justin Bieber, or whatever. Over the years, Cyrus's song Party in the USA gained popularity in American culture on holidays and historic events. The song has re-entered the charts every Independence Day since its release. Following the death of Osama bin Laden on May 2, 2011, a resurgence in popularity of the music video occurred. The official YouTube video was flooded with comments regarding the death of bin Laden, and it was immediately deemed a celebratory anthem for the event. In 2013, 
An online petition on the White House's We the People Petitions website was urging then-President Barack Obama to change the U.S. national anthem from the Star-Spangled Banner to Party in the USA following the 2020 presidential election, as major news outlets announced Democratic nominee Joe Biden the winner of the presidential race. On November 7, 2020, supporters in New York City started singing Party in the USA at Times Square. Cyrus's album Bangers, along with its promotional events is considered to be one of the most controversial moments in the 2010's wider popular culture and established Cyrus among the decade's most controversial figures. Glamour writer Mickey Woods likened the promotional era for the album to those of Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera's third and fourth studio albums Britney and Stripped, respectively, adding that Cyrus's record will probably be retrospectively deemed iconic, maybe even classic. Billboard listed Bangers as one of the best and most influential albums of the 2010s noting that with this pivotal album release, Cyrus took control of her public persona, surprising less with her provocative antics than with her constant artistic evolution. The album is considered a trendsetter in weaving together urban and pop influences, what's most revered now is what it represented then according to Lindsay Havens. Patrick Ryan of USA Today commented that Cyrus's collaborations with Mike Will Made It on the album contributed to his newfound prominence, stating that Mike Will Made It's position as an executive producer has helped him to the forefront as an interesting character in an era where a lot of producers have fallen behind the scenes again. Vice described Cyrus as the most punk rock musician out there right now, and that she is spinning circles around every single pop star who is trying to be edgy right now. MTV named Cyrus their best artist of 2013, and James Montgomery of MTV News elaborated on the network's decision that Cyrus her independence and the pop culture landscape, adding that she schooled, and shocked, us all in 2013, and did so on her own terms. Billboard staff called Cyrus the most talked about pop star of 2013, and also recognized the controversial evolution of her career as the top music moment of the year, elaborating that she was a maelstrom that expanded and grazed nearly every aspect of pop culture in 2013. The publication also listed We Can't Stop as Best Song of 2013 for being one of the bolder musical choices in recent memory, and that risk paid off tremendously. And one of the songs that defined the decade stating it created a new play in the playbook of pop music. In 2014, Page Six placed Cyrus second place among the 21 most powerful celebrities under 25, with $150 million thanks to her work on Hannah Montana, merchandising, touring and music sales. In 2015, Rebecca Nicholson from The Guardian published an article calling Cyrus the Madonna of her generation, saying that she's a Disney survivor with a fluid approach to gender identity. And, like the old three-chord punks, she gives really good quote. According to Nicholson, Cyrus takes the 90s Madonna approach to public sexuality, it's deliberately provocative, and crucially, it is not being served up for male consumption. Likewise, she defends Cyrus's controversial rebellion, highlighting that behind the character there is a human, talented and strong person who manages to connect with the public, just like the Queen of Pop. In November of the same year, Billboard catalogued the singer as one of the greatest of all time Billboard 200 artists, occupying position 31. In 2017, the aforementioned magazine also published an article naming the singer a queer superhero for her philanthropic fight for the LGBTQ community. Chapter 7, Discography Meet Miley Cyrus Breakout Can't Be Tamed Bangers? Miley Cyrus and her dead pets. Younger Now. Plastic Hearts. Chapter 8, Filmography. Big Fish. Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus, Best of Both Worlds Concert. Bolt. Hannah Montana, The Movie. The Last Song. LOL. So Undercover. Miley, The Movement. The Night Before. A Very Murray Christmas. Crisis in Six Scenes. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Stand By You. 
Chapter 9, Tours Best of Both Worlds Tour Wonder World Tour Gypsy Heart Tour Bangers Tour Milky Milky Milk Tour Chapter 10, Awards and Nominations